All right, ladies and gentlemen, it slices, it dices, it chops, it purees, but most of all, it squeezes. I am leaving the Mombasha stealth tent site. It's about quarter to seven this morning. The sun's out. It's going to be a beautiful day. Hey, I'm excited for the day. There is something coming up called the lemon squeezer. And I think it's just um, more of the trail goes right through a boulder crevice. Gets kind of tight, I understand. Uh, but it is on the map. And that's about halfway into the hike. I'm hoping to get 16 miles today to the next shelter up. If I'm feeling good, I might go for the next shelter up, which is only three more miles or about a 19 mile day. So we'll see, the weather's gonna cooperate. I'm looking forward to that. Maybe get some views here. Uh, my legs are feeling good. I always like to check on those because that's what's gonna get me through the, entire 2200 miles yeah i'm tired <laughs> whippoorwills woke me up uh before 5 a.m this morning that's okay that's okay i think it's the same one that's following me up the trail just sounds the same i don't know so we're gonna get on to hiking i've got about a three-day food supply although my snacks are down to today and tomorrow so I, I gotta start looking for something like that but that's that's ahead but um all right let's get hiking onward So early on, within the hour, I'm on this, uh, you can see this double planked boardwalk through what I would call a swamp. That's what we call it back home. So it's kind of moist in here. But if you ever grew up around the time when uh, Three Stooges were putting out uh, movies and all that, when I step on these, uh, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, if I step on the end of one of these, that thing's gonna just flip up and smack me in the face. Like if, if there's one that's like not nailed down right, I'm just gonna step on it, boom, end of through hike. But that's not happening, but <laughs> that's what goes through my head out here. Onward!
Okay, I'm about an hour and a half into my hike, and the first trail magic that I've experienced in the form of something left for through hikers, and there's a cache of water, all these uh, gallons of water, a log book left by the Tuxedo Trail Angels. So much appreciated. I get to camel up here and get some fresh water. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I have summited the highest ascent of the day, I believe. It looks like it's still ups and downs the rest of the day, but uh, not as steep and as high as this one. Uh, I think I'm in Harriman State Park, New York, but the last road crossing before I got into the park, I had the, well, actually my only best trail magic. I. Uh, came out of a trailhead at a road crossing and uh, there was a state park right across the road and it was uh, roped off. I think it's opening up tomorrow, I'm not sure. But anyway, there was a car parked uh, on the side of the road right at the entrance and I'm looking at my gut hook app to see kind of which way I gotta go, which was actually straight. And as I crossed the road and got to the other side where the car was parked, a man jumps out. He says, hey, I know you. And I said, okay. And he said, yeah, I know you from YouTube. And I was like, oh, wow. And um, he proceeds to, his name is Fred. Fred, before I forget and I get into the rest of the story, I just want to thank you. He proceeds to pull out uh, a couple of coolers. He puts a stool down for me to sit on. He said, I got some trail magic for you. He had Gatorade, uh, Capri Suns. He had baked brownies this morning. He had a whole uh, plate of uh, brownies, fresh cookies, uh, baggies, you know, gallon size baggies, quart size baggies, which uh, as a hiker we can use all the time. He took my trash, um, had a great conversation, and um, I got some, uh, also some trail mix for snack. So uh, I downed a, I don't know, 32 ounces of Gatorade right there. And I was just, uh, I was so thankful uh, to come across this type of human kindness and generosity, not looking for anything in return. I mean, he'd gone out of his way to uh, purchase all, all these items uh, just to help through hikers out. So, Fred, I'm so appreciative. Thank you so much. You lifted my spirits today. Uh, got me up this hill as slow as I am, but uh, so thankful I won't forget you for, uh, for a long time. I won't forget you beyond however long I'm out here for. So, thanks a lot and uh, hope to see in the future somewhere.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it slices, it dices, it chops, it purees, but most of all, it squeezes the lemons. I think I know what that's about, but we have reached the lemon squeezer and we're gonna see if we can fit through. I have lost weight since I started, so um, we'll see what happens here. Sometimes it's reported that people have to take their packs off to get through. I'm not sure if this is the actual thing or if it gets a little bit tighter through there, but uh, let's take a look. Onward. All right, that wasn't the squeezer portion. That is, it's narrow and it is angled. And I don't think I can get through with my pack on. Um, I could see getting stuck in there <laughs> and having to back out or something, but uh, we're gonna try this and I'm gonna have to put this video down too, so. See you on the other okay, side. Okay, so here's what I did. I just walked through about halfway with my pack and I kind of put it up over my head up onto a ledge. So we're gonna walk through. All I have left is poles in my fanny pack here. We're gonna walk through without the pack on. It kind of forces you to lean to the left. Um, but here we go. Okay, fun little time there. <laughs> it looks kind of mean from here, but there it is. It's just a, uh, a open top tunnel and it's pretty tight. I don't, I'm glad I didn't try it with my pack on. I wouldn't have been able to turn my body. So there's my pack right there and my poles. So there's a ledge up on the left side if you're, of course you're going no, northbound. So lemon squeezer. All done. All right, so immediately after the lemon squeezer, it takes you up those rocks. I'm not quite sure how that's done, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I don't even see how you can do that, but there's a white, there's a white blaze up there, right there. So here we go. Okay, I survived. <laughs> I went up the hard way and skimmed my knee doing it, but I didn't want to take the blue alternate way, the easy way out. Yeah, because I want the full experience, whether I die, <laughs> I'll die a noble death. So it's kind of cool, slow going, but uh, that was probably the steepest, uh, most awkward climb. You know, like, I mean, just a really short one, but um, very challenging. So I had to use my knees. All right, so onward, let's go see what, what else today has in store.
Okay, I have made it to the William Bryan Memorial Shelter. That's that two-car garage back there. I'm not staying in the shelter. But the, uh, the cool thing is that shelter is right on the AT. I'm standing on the trail, which I'll be taking out of here tomorrow. So I am tenting tonight. It's kind of an old shelter. Potentially some mice problems. But I'm tenting and... There's me, way down there. So, it's um, a pretty wide open place. A lot of tent sites. So I chose a nice flat one. I'm getting better at that. So it was a 16 mile day. And, uh, I hate to say this, but I feel a little better after the 16 mile day than I have previously. Um, yes, the feet still hurt and I'm dragging for the last like four miles. It's like, uh, but I did make it, it gives me time to, um, kind of lay down for an hour or so and just, uh, stretch my feet, do some, uh, cork ball massage and, uh, just kind of catch my breath, then have some dinner and then get situated for, uh, darkness, which will be pretty soon here. So tomorrow, um, another, uh, 16, 17 mile day is not a shelter for probably 30 miles from here. So I've got to wing it a little bit. There's a couple of options, but we'll see. But the story for tomorrow is it's going to be close to 90 degrees and sunny. So, at the time when I'm hurting the most in the afternoons is when it's going to be the hottest. So, I want to make sure I'm plenty hydrated, which has been a challenge out here in New York. Um, but other than that, um, I'm starting to kind of, my mind can relax a little bit, reflect a little bit on why I'm out here, which is really important because it's easy to walk away from here. It can be easy to walk away from here and get off the trail and go home. But you got to have a why. So more on that tomorrow. See you guys later. All right, so I almost forgot to mention, this was a pretty cool day for two reasons. One, the lemon squeezer. It was kind of a fun little challenge. And actually the squeezer wasn't the real challenge. I mean, you can squeeze through, take your backpack off if you want. But immediately following the getting through the squeeze, you, there's a cliff right there. And the white blaze goes up the cliff. There's a little blue blaze side trail that goes around the left in case you don't think you can handle the cliff. And I, I did the white blaze. I, I did the cliff part. Skin my knee up, but it's kind of cool. I mean, like, I'm not supposed to be doing that stuff. But second one is Trail Angel Fred. Complete surprise. I came out. I think I, I said this on the video. I uh, came out of a trailhead onto a road, and there was Fred sitting there and just um, lifted my spirits. Just the kindness and generosity that one person can show a stranger. Um, and I always, always wonder, why do these people do it? And uh, probably by the end of the trail, by the time I leave here, I'll know, but just to have that, uh, that spirit of giving like he had for me was, um, pretty cool. So thanks again, Fred. <laughs> it was perfect timing. It was a perfect place. And the brownies and cookies were awesome. Thanks again.